Hey, I'm Mark. It's early November, a couple weeks from my last video. You can see the size, how much the collard greens have grown. And we seeded the rest of them. I'll be thinning those to just eight inches apart here shortly, next week or so. And we picked some lettuce, <clears throat> some romaine lettuce the other day, about six heads. You can see the little stub there. I'll be picking about five or six heads today. And this little stub will put out new shoots in about 45 to 50 days, I'll be picking it again. And this is our broccoli. You can see a little small head forming in there. And I, I've got it uh, timed to where the plants at the far end are not as old as the ones at this end so you can see here's a head of broccoli I'll be picking probably late this afternoon there's another one by staggering your plantings you can have uh, I can have food here where I live in the south Alabama all winter long these plants are hardy down to 10 degrees and these are Brussels sprouts. They're not forming any sprouts just yet, but their plants are real healthy. And here's some more broccoli. These are potatoes. I'll be harvesting these in a, about three weeks for our first expected frost. So, and my cabbage is doing real well. You can see it making a head. Some more cabbage, some purple cabbage down here. It's making heads as well. I use dimitaceous earth to help control the insects. It is a, a fossil of freshwater animals that uh, died a long time ago, obviously. And you just throw it out as kind of a powder this is rutabaga here. It's kind of like a potato. It's real tasty, kind of a yellowish, uh, soft root that you eat. And uh, Domitaceous Earth is kind of like broken shards of glass on a microscopic level. It, as insects pass by it, it scratches their bodies and it ends up killing them. So it's a safe product to use to kill insects in your garden. I haven't let my chickens out yet. I've, uh, I lost one this week. I've had a huge black bear, male black bear hanging out. The biggest one I've ever seen around here. And a black coyote and uh, several snakes I killed this week. So I'm having to keep a close eye on letting them free range and keeping my shotgun handy as well. He was, uh, that black bear was, like I said, the biggest one I've, I've ever seen around here. His head was all scarred up and lumpy looking and his ears looked like they were missing, like he'd been in a fight and they'd been chewed off. That's my new hoe I made in the last video. Weeds the garden, it's the shape, it takes the, it takes the shape of the row so that it weeds, you just push it along and it weeds the sides of the row and in between, it's real fast. Can weed the, I can read a, a row or two in a matter of a, a minute. And later today I'll be chopping down this black gum tree here. It's a real pretty tree in the fall, it's got a lot of good colors, but it's too close to the garden and I'll be chopping it down with an axe here the old-fashioned way later today. This black gum tree 
it's uh, really good for nothing. It, when it burns, it, it stinks. It's almost impossible to split. Said it's pretty in the fall with the leaves and all, but uh, <clears throat> it's just too close to the garden. I'm wanting to expand a little bit. Probably going to be trimming some limbs on these other ones too. Well, I'm a, a little more than halfway through. That's some tough wood there. It's not like oak or pine that you can make big old hunks out of with a single whack. It's called a gum tree and the wood is really rubbery. It wax just bounces off of it if you try to split it. Well, I need to move my camera and the <clears throat> tree's gonna be falling that direction. There she blows. Well, we'll take the tractor now and drag it off into the woods. I'll be updating y'all on the garden oh, about every two weeks. Appreciate y'all watching.